It is 6.30. I'll call the meeting to order. On agenda amendments, uh, we're eliminating number seven. That would be the um, hot weather annex. Stephanie will not be able to be here tonight. You'll also note that you got a revised uh, pay order, too. The minutes, September 19th, I need a motion and to discuss. I'll make a, a motion. Second. A motion to discuss. A second. Any questions? Anything that needs to be revised, looked at, or... Yeah. Hearing none, I'll move the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pay orders for October 4, currently showing at 27951 and 40 cents. I need a motion the second to discuss the pay orders. I'll make a motion. Second. Anything that looks out of place needs to be replaced. Hearing none, I'll move the motion for twenty-seven thousand nine fifty-one and forty cents. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Honorable mentions for the week, Sandra and Alan Hochberg for donations, both money and food, to the uh, food shelf, and also to the for survivors. Uh, that was the group that performed at the uh, revised town hall concert that uh, Sandy arranges. I don't see Phil as of yet, so we'll hold off on that. Right over here. Oh, you're behind the lamp. <laughs> I might stay out of trouble that way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go first here. All right. Um, I didn't get back this afternoon to see if they had their trucks running or not, but they had two trucks and a backhoe down this morning. I, didn't, I think they're just battery issues. So they were working on them when I was down there earlier with Bruce. And, uh, I didn't get back this afternoon to check on them, see how they were making out. Um, one question I do have, I took Bruce down and looked at it today. The driveway, which used to be Mrs. Brown's, across from Family Dollar. Ronnie owns that now, Shaw, and he approached me about fixing the culvert alignment and the washout so he can widen that driveway some. The washout issue is a town issue. It's something that keeps washing in. There's a section approximately 20 feet between culverts that is where Cumberland Farms left off when the state made them put the culvert in, the 30 inch culvert, to come out of their yard. And Mrs. Brown had a 24 inch plastic culvert under their driveway. Well, since then, as he's bought it and things have collapsed some and washed into the river or the stream a little bit, virtually no running water. He wanted to know what the town's liability on it was because in the, I think in the paperwork it says that they're liable to replace Owners, the property owner puts the first one in, the town replaces if they need to be the second culvert, if it's damaged or, you know, rust out or damaged. You said in the paperwork, what paperwork? I think it's in the town um, Minister, driveway, Minister driveway stuff, the driveway, oh, the driveway policy. policy. I think that's the way it's always been. Um, so, my question is to the town the select board, that's why I took Bruce down there and had him look at it also, is part of the issue is the towns, where the culvert is, 
what he is proposing is putting a piece of culvert inside of the 30 inch that is there, which would make 24 inch, connecting to his culvert, which is 24 inch and there's nothing wrong with it, and covering that up to eliminate the issue of the water erosion coming down from Route 7 and the side of Maple Street. It would put it down further, a little bit further, and then put it back into the stream, but it would eliminate that wash right there straight across from Family Dollar. So my question to the board is, what would they like to do with it? Because I'm not sure quite how to go about it. Does that sound like a workable plan? Well, I do. I think it can be a culvert could be put in, closed up, and it could be eliminate the issue that's there, put it down a little further, back into where the head wall is better, and not saying it's going to be a perfect fix, but it's going to eliminate the issue across from the entrance to the driveway. Um, not sure whether Ronnie should eat it all or the town should eat it all, I think. Maybe work together on it and not have to get into each other's pockets quite so bad. Um, that's why I'm bringing it to the board because I don't know what they want to do with it. Is there a way to look at that driveway policy so we can see what was yep. established in the past? Yep. Okay. Will the 24 inch work with that 30 culvert or is there any obstruction inside the call call well, it should slide right inside it I measured it. it should slide right inside of it and the opposing end should slide her 24 inch right inside that and make another joint and be done with it bear it with crushed gravel compact it and should be all set when I looked at that that whole dish has got all kinds of silt in it yeah is that yes. something you can take out of there at the same time, clean that dip? Well, yeah, I think Steve can get in and get some of that cleaned out. The issue being with that ditch is when it gets down towards the railroad tracks, there's no outfall. So it kind of fills up in there, and I know the railroad has already dug that out once. And I don't know if they can do it again, but yes, that whole ditch is full. It needs to be cleaned out. There's a lot of dirt in it. Well, definitely going that 24, 30 inch is a lot cheaper than if we have to take that whole thing out of there. Yeah. And with, and with that being in our right of way, I think we're probably going to eat the, not eat the expense anyhow. I, I don't know. That's why I want to bring it to the board. I wanted them to make the decision on if, what. If it was a question of something further back up the driveway, I would say, yeah, he should be in expense. That's correct. But I think where it is there, I mean, We've had trouble with that ditch for as long as I've been on the board. That, I think that's when the Cumberland Farms built the new parking lot and building and they put all the storm drains in. I think that runoff was part of the deal from, with the state that they had to catch have storm drains on their property to run in there. Our storm drain across the road from Nash Drive also comes in there too. And I, I think it's Meacham Street too. I think anything you have to do with what the state put in there would fall back on them. But that one, that one culvert at that driveway, I think is probably ours. Yeah. My my thought would be, do it all one shot. Take the back over there and clean that ditch at the same time that you're putting that culvert through. Yeah. Does anybody else on the board have an idea? That sounds like my sounds suggestion like was that maybe we split the cost with with Ronnie, but I mean it's is the culvert plan is that what it says that the town is liable for the second one? I, I, for some reason I thought I read that years ago. Yeah, once installed, the road commissioner shall inspect and accept it in writing. The culvert will then become the responsibility of the town. Exactly. So. So if it was accepted into writing that culvert, then it is, then it becomes the town's responsibility. I don't know who put that culvert in for Mrs. Brown. That's probably been done. It looks like a fairly new culvert, but I don't know when it was put in. Mm. Might have been when it was Cumbies. Before me. Maybe when Cumbies. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, I don't did know. It. Mm -hmm. 
But the two, the issue being you can't just put a piece of pipe in the middle and cover it because they're misaligned, they won't line up. Okay. So you need to take the pre-existing one that's there, that's in there, out and realign it with the new one you're putting in and then just keep right on going with that culvert is fine. Just keep right on going with that. You just need to it just needs to be dug out and set over. It's just not aligned so you can hook things together the way it mm -hmm. needs to be. And by covering it up isn't going to anything that would be running down into the ditch now. It's going to go further down and come in where it's small. It's not just going to run over it and go into the road or anything. No, no, no. Okay. It's going to go down just like it's doing. No, down I mean the shoulder. on the side where, like, right near where you're covering it. No, it's okay. going to just go down the road shoulder more. Okay. In the back end of the ditch line. Okay. But like I say, it's it's a call on the select board what they'd like to do and how they want to do it. My suggestion would be to put a culvert in and cover it up and eliminate that wash issue right there. They do have a 24 inch culvert down there. The garage. Are we in agreement to go that way? Yes. I'd say by consensus that we're in agreement. Put the culvert in, extend it, cover it up. Okay. I think uh, Eric, Eric has to leave soon for another okay. meeting, so okay. can we take him back? Sure. Okay, um, just kind of touching base with East Street. I was at the last meeting. Um, actually, I guess it was two meetings ago. Uh, touching base with the ditching and the brush tree removal on East Street. And I know Phil came up and I think they started it. Yeah. And it looked pretty good. And I was just questioning where are, where are we with that? Where are we going with that? Are we are we do we have a and this well, is a question. Go ahead, Bob, go ahead. Sorry. Well this I, I was gonna talk to town about that again tonight. Um, I went over there plan on doing a couple hours work. And I got an hour in before what I bought broke from the factory. So my part held up, my welding job held up, the rest of it didn't. So at some point I'd like to go back over and do a little more clearing and I would probably get that section done between the base of Lee Holmes, Kurt Holmes house, you know, to Eric's driveway, back down through to Lee Holmes place. The majority of the heavier brush, well, I've been cutting eight, 10 inch trees and laying them down, and Steve was taking them and putting them up in Eric's stump dump. I'd like to finish that and then let the town look at it and decide whether they want to do some of this in the future down the road after they go through and do a little brush work with the smaller stuff. Because it's literally so viney and thick over there, you can't see it, the base of the tree you cut. It's, it's really bad. That's the other thing I was going to talk about was the brush hog for the small machine to do a lot of this roadside cleanup in the winter time when we have no leaves, you can see what you're doing. We'll have to contend with a little snow. But that's something I was going to contend with after we talk to Eric. Just, just had a question on, and honestly for an hour's worth of work, it looked Great. I mean, you got a lot of stuff up there. Yeah, we did roughly um, 250, 300 feet in the right. hour. Um, so, that being said, you're, I would love to go with you next time you're there and we'll cut some of those trees so you can just keep pushing it back. Yeah. At the dome. That's a stump dome. Cut them, tip them right cut, over. Cut yep. them, tip them right that. over, and just get them out of there. Question I had was. Are you further ahead to wait on a grinder, or is there is there a reason that you just can't take a backhoe in the thumb and pull some of that viney, crappy stuff out, or does that create more of a no? Issue? You could, I, I, you, you could pull a lot question. of that down with the machine. Um, issue being with that is when you do that, you you disturb a lot of undergrowth that pulls up with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the, right, you make a lot of dirt, a lot of stuff in the road. 
Yeah. But yeah, you can do some of that. You know, there's still some tree stubs left there that were going to get recut off. They just didn't get to it that day. Right. You know, I sheared the tops out of them, and they were going to come back and just cut the eight or ten foot stub off of the chainsaw and push right up over the bank up there. So it just we didn't hold together as good as we expected. Right. So, no. Yeah, it's, you could do that, but we're not going to do. We're not looking for a, a grinder. It's just a miniature brush hog that actually fits on the boom, and you can just mold it. So he can limb and, and cut all that brush down and mulch it out. Right. So he can actually get vertical <coughs> and come yeah. down. Yeah, he can go right over just like a head shirt. Yeah. Set right over the width of the boom and cut it and trim down the rows. Right. Because yeah, they need I mean the first from it. Yeah, I'll be honest. The first year from what I've seen from Clarendon when they did it. Yeah. Looks like a mess, but yeah. you know, because you're grinding a lot of that stuff. Oh, there's back. a lot of debris, a lot of debris in the edges. The next year, it all greens up and yeah. it looks like a green wall there. Yeah. So you deal with it the first year, but yeah, I did want to say it. You know, it looked. I was impressed that it for worked. Now well, it's worth. It worked. A, but it's fairly quick, safe. You don't have to deal with men under the trees. You don't have to worry about the tree going around the power line. You grab it, we did it, cut shears it off, pick it up, lay it right in the road. We did coincidentally lose power that day, and I went. Wasn't <laughs> 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 it? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I wonder if it was a gentleman that moved in down there at Lee Holt. He cut a tree. Oh. On the side of the road, I bet he got into the well, tree with his machine. Probably, uh, so. so that was long gone. The car was still on my left. <laughs> <laughs> Lights were on when I, I got it. Been I think I tried. Yeah. I chuckled. <laughs> but. <laughs> But no, I did, you know, I just want to say I think it, it looks good and then hopefully the, mm -hmm. but I'm here to keep pushing. Yeah, there's a lot to do. <laughs> so, so Phil, when do you think, is there any estimate of when you might be able to get back up there again? Or? Well, it's, it, it, it's going to be November, December now. It's the wrong time of year to be yep. trying to do some of that right now. Just. If you do an amount of brush hogging up there, what what are you going to use for equipment, or is that something you're going to have to let out, or what? Well, no. It, well, you were missed. You were out a couple meetings now, so we talked about a small brush head, brush hog that goes okay. on our small excavator. So, and it's it, it's I'm trying to get some more information this past week and a half, and I haven't been able to get any more. So, it, in time, I can get some more information on it. <laughs> Not huge money, not the money they were talking for the rotary heads, you know, 30 plus thousand for a rotary head. You're only talking somewhere between five and seven thousand for one of these smaller heads that plums right up to a, our small excavator. And in the off season, they can go along and trim all this stuff back, go road to road with a little excavator, just clean it up. And then if they, you guys decide you want to go through and cut the bigger stuff that leans out on the road, which what I was doing, that's something we sit down and figure it out. In the packet, we've got a uh, equipment rental for a tractor here. Yep. Um, have you looked at that or seen it? Yes. Um, the one in Middletown. Yes. I'm not sure what which one that is over there. Mm -hmm. Is that the town of Middletown itself? No, it's a company in Middletown. Haven House Farm Equipment. That's about. I don't know. It's a lot cheaper than what we were paying. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But if you get something that goes on our track machine, you'll do a lot of that. Yeah. Running that. You're still going to have your roadside mowing of your grass, like on 140 and Creek Road, and that you can either rent that or do something with. But a lot of the brushier stuff can be done with an excavator through winter if they have a head for it. That's basically what that is, just the same thing. If we did go with these people, I would think we would want to have them provide an operator. Yeah, it was another additional, what, 25 or $30 an hour? Okay. It just says an hourly rate. It doesn't really say what it is, but... I mean, yeah. The arm that you're looking at, does that have an attachment that would do roadside mowing? 
the, the machine I'm looking at, Bushog, yeah. it goes right on our excavator. Yeah. It goes right on the boom of the excavator. Would we still need to rent something like this? Well, you're still going to have a certain amount of roadside mowing, like 140, okay. um, Creek Road, you know, a smaller version of what that is. You're not going to have, a, you know, all this brushy stuff along all the major dirt roads. That With the reduced there. amount, would you be looking at a one week or a two week rental? Oh, I think a one week rental. One easily, week rental? Yeah, we easily do that. Yeah. I, I did all the roads this year, one pass with my machine, and it was only 49 hours, everything. And there's a lot of that you won't do if you mow with a, our excavator. Well, I think it's well worth renting it before January 1st. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. There's quite a difference. At least, at least to get it reserved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What time frame would we want to do it? We always try to do it the last week of June, before Fourth of July weekend. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little too early. It seems like stuff really grew up oh, this year. Yeah. This year it didn't grow much after Fourth of July because it was so dry. It's just something we did because of Fourth of July traffic and stuff. Oh. Any time in mid in July would work. We've also got winter salt on there. I don't believe we've gotten a final bids on any of this yet. Um, the verbal Appalachians was in 90s. Uh, last year the contract was 72.31. As pretty much expected is in everything that it's going to be higher this year. Sandy, have we got any other prices on this yet? No, we're still waiting for Cargill's. Cargill got the state contract call for District 3, so... Um, I think probably we better wait on that until we've got something more firm. Yeah, yeah. we went with them last year. I'm hoping they're in the... Uh, John mentioned the shortage of depth. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. John mentioned the shortage on depth. Have they been able to obtain some of that? Yeah, barrels. They yeah, haven't had any issues. I think it's just another scare tactic. Fuel, death fluid, just something to make everybody go out and hoard it all. Toilet paper. You probably had a chance to look at the map that Green Mountain Power sent us? Yes. Do you see anything that's bad about that? No, the one on Sugar Hill. Yeah. I spent a couple hours up there with them. Um, after we spent some time up there, Candace Patch called me and said that she was not happy with what they were going to do in her yard. So I don't know if things are going to change on that or not. Which one was that? Candace Patch. Munson. 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 Oh, Munson. Sorry. Yeah. That's what you said, Candace. Um, what about running a power line up through the ditch? I mean, to me, that doesn't seem like. We well, I think the obvious thing is that they can bring it, the road, actually. if they can bring it down the road, it's going to be better. But it's in the shoulder of the road. Yeah. That's they said the ditch line. I said, well, that's just going to be a nightmare if it ever floats. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you move it over, they're talking four to five feet in the road, which is not going to be an issue. But in the ditch, you know, you don't know how much more water you're going to get in the ditch and how much it's going to move around. So they want to run it in the road itself? Shoulder. Yeah, right on the very shoulder of the road. Is that going to become a road hazard? Shouldn't be. Not at five or six feet down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I told him, I said, Lines, it's not like Geo. Um, was it Geo Tech that did that last run? Mass Tech. That did the last run and plowed through all the culverts. Oh, they just were a nightmare up there. <laughs> I know I I see no issue with doing that. They do it everywhere now. I don't think we've got an issue as long as they can settle with Candy. Yeah, they'll have to settle up with her on what where they put the um, transformer, the last transformer. Do we need to talk about Prospects. It's about the 25, yeah. yeah. I don't think still needs to get in on that, though. 
Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, she's got two grants and aid equipment program and the grants and aid. Um, yeah. I'm a, have you figured out how much we're going to actually have to spend above the 56 yet? On that debris blower? No, I haven't. Okay. I see Town of Shrewsbury has one, so yeah, I got, You got a quote last year from Buffalo Turbine? Yep. 7900 Okay. Let me research that a little more. And then the uh, grant's going to give us 56 and we have to pay anything above 56 Okay. And obviously after the uh, the Chapin Road or whatever it was up there, um, I think we probably need to talk with Steve, either Stephanie, we're doing a self-inspection now. Oh, on Blackhawk. So, yeah. So yeah, Black yeah. okay, Blackhawk. Okay. Uh, I changed the confused. I think probably we need to get down to a serious talk with him over specifications. Yeah. I mean, specs are... All of the book. Yeah. Okay. In the same vein, we had a complaint about the speed on Prospect Street over here. Uh, the question arisen whether we should be putting 25 mile an hour speed signs up there. Um, Basically, I'm going to put that to the board to decide what they want to do. I can tell you from experience, I don't believe speed signs are going to do an awful lot there. And I can tell you right now that putting a sheriff over there to run radar is useless. Uh, my past experience running radar is everybody and his brother knows you're sitting there. Um, I doubt that he will dedicate an unmarked cruiser to do it, and even with an unmarked cruiser, everybody comes off that street or goes up it, flashes their lights at everybody to let them know there's a cop sitting there. And the street is so short, there's only a, a limited amount of speed that you can reach top speed, uh, short of driving a Mustang 5 all that <coughs> Will jackrabbit or whatever. Um, I'm sure that if she's there and a car came close to her, 25 or 35 was frightening as all heck. Yeah. Uh, I don't have an objection to putting a 25 at the beginning of the the streets. Uh, the agency of transportation recommends that we not over sign streets in the town because basically all you're doing is putting up something on somebody's lawn to mow around but I'll, I'll leave it to the others here to to decide what they like at the same time I don't really want to it's, it's oh, well, lady, we're not doing anything. It's a tricky street because there really is, like, no place to walk there. You're basically, when you walk that street, except for the sidewalks at the bottom down by the mobile station, you're basically in the road yeah. when you're walking there. And the um, sides are pretty steep, so it's not like you can really get yeah. over. Um, I don't... No, I, I can tell you, it. I've had kids playing soccer in the street. Mm -hmm. I've seen basketballs bounce. In the winter time, the kids come up there to turn their sleds around mm -hmm. to go down the hill. Yep. Um, I totally understand that yeah. the need for people to be more observant and to slow down. How close? But for the last 30 years, it's been a quandary to me to how to slow them down. How close is there? Is a 25 mile an hour sign not far from that street? How far is it from that street? The one that's already up? I honestly can't tell you off the top okay. of my head. Uh, yeah. I almost think that, that there's either a no truck traffic or a speed limit sign as you enter from 140 
And I think the sign on the lower end is right almost just off Route 7. Okay. I don't think a car coming out of Cumberland Farms would drive by it. Yeah. We, we, is there a possibility to have like signs that might say like high pedestrian area or something like that? Because like I know I walked out with uh, my daughter and my dog every day. Or children at play? But they don't like those. AMT doesn't like the children at play. So. Okay. But I mean it's it's a village. Every place is a high and pedestrian. Yes. Yeah. I mean, are you going to put signs everywhere? And that's, I think if we start doing this, it's going to be, a dot, the whole village event. will be 25. And yeah. Gotcha. We can ask Steve to make sure that there's a 25 posted at the beginnings of both, both streets. Uh, hopefully that Hopefully it'll have some effect. I'm think. not sure that it will. But. Yeah. Do you want to put up extra signs or no? I say no. I don't. Okay. I say no. Because, yeah. I mean, it's the more signs you have up, the more things get ignored, more it's, it's it comes down to common sense. <laughs> and a sign's not going give to give anybody that. Right. And same with having a you know, it was like once it was said that the sheriffs were going to be mainly on one route, then everybody else knew all the side routes were free. Things need to be unpredictable with them. Yeah. I think if we send a note to the sheriff to have him have his patrol say go across there at least twice a, uh, twice a shift. At least make it part of the rotation. Yeah. Make, you know. But, I mean, all roads should be at some part of their rotation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, I mean, that's... Because on all the side streets, there can be crazy yes. traffic. Everywhere. Here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. To an extent, I would agree... But when you're running a four-hour shift at the most... Oh. oh, I'm not saying hit them all within the four-hour shift. Right. Just, you know, but not to, not limit where they are within that four-hour exactly. shift, saying you need to be here, here, and here. Make it yeah. sporadic. I, I, would, I would agree that like, having them go across there, that's a heavily travel, mm -hmm. travel street. Yep. Um, Mill Street, those streets in there aren't. Uh, we're getting, we're going to address it later, the one-way traffic on Florence. Yeah, and and um, our that, traffic pattern will change that, within the town once that happens too. That road, Florence, has been 24,000 pounds forever. And yet nobody gets stopped or written for driving mm -hmm. on there with a semi. Yeah. I do think that if we're using him Railroad Street, River Street, Prospect Street, Hull. The streets that see a tremendous amount of traffic. And some of the other streets, Florence, uh, that's going to come into question with what we do with it. Um, but certainly the side streets running down to uh, Cumberland Farms on this side some of them really don't have enough traffic to to be patrolled that often. Mm -hmm. It's nice that they drive through there occasionally. That's what I'm saying, just occasionally, not yeah. like give them a list of hit all of these every time. Exactly. Right. Just not have it, because when they do have those disturbances and other things yeah. going on that they can't do anything, and so they are just always just hitting the same three streets every time. Right. It's not fair to the rest of the citizens. Just to make it more random. A little bit. Right. Yes, you should hit bing bing more often. Just. Yes. A little variety. So everybody feels that they have some representation by the sheriffs. Right. Yep. <coughs> okay. Anything else, Phil? No, I'm all set. I'm going to number. 
public comments. How was our annex was eliminated? Wallingford Fire Department coin drop. Sure. <laughs> so I also had two other things after the coin drop piece or before. It doesn't match. A third minor things. Uh, one, we've responded to this building a couple of times in the past few years for fire alarms. That's what we're supposed to do. But I need to make sure the board is aware that the fire alarm does not go anywhere. It's called a local alarm. So it only comes right to here and beeps inside the building. And maybe it is an outside one, I'm not positive. But if we don't get a call from a neighbor, we don't know that the fire alarm has gone off. So we had a lightning strike at the tower, but I don't really think it hit the tower. I think it was nearby. The alarm went off, but we had one of our firefighters living across the street. And he came outside to see what the big boom was and heard the mm -hmm. alarms. The other one we had, it was just a child that pulled the pull station in here on a Saturday. Somebody was cleaning or something uh, and did that. But I didn't know if the board knew that it didn't go anywhere. It's not the law. You don't have to do it. It has to go somewhere if somebody sleeps here. Right? If we're going to sleep people here, not in an emergency. So if we have another hurricane or something and we set up cots somewhere, that's okay. Because there'll always be a fire watch here. There'll be somebody awake. But I just made, needed to make you guys aware of that. Um, from our point of view, it's a pretty big building, right? And a head start on a fire. Any minute we can get here before it gets bigger would be really cool. Um, but it, it isn't required. It's not an expense that you have to take. It's just I didn't know if you already knew it or you didn't know. It, it doesn't matter. There's no state law. NFPA doesn't cover that. Um, when people are in the building, they're awake, right? They're here for meetings or working or what have you. So there's no one here sleeping intentionally, right? Um, so. I want to make you aware of that, so whatever you want to do to do with that. Um, the other things, can I get in your weekly, monthly newsletter if it comes out before? Yes. About not so much the fire alarm, but when you change your clocks, please change the battery, smoke detectors, and COs. Okay. Just something like that. Julie does that. She's okay, Julie. Thank you. Word it any way you want and mm -hmm. have it come from whoever you'd like, but that, that's a good mm -hmm. time to do it when we change the clocks. I think it's November 1st this year, 1st or 2nd. Something like that. Sounds right. I think it's the second. Okay, coin drop. So we have a permit from the state, from AOT, as we usually do. And we usually come up here and make you guys aware of when it is and, and where and the times and all of those type of things. So we're looking at Saturday. We have the permit, except I left it in the car, but we can email it to you if you'd like. Or I can run out to the car when I'm done and just bring it back in. So we have, we have that. Uh, we're looking at 9 to 3 is when we normally do it and we do it down near the rotary area of, of uh, Route 7. So the question has been asked. I guess people have been asking questions about that. I'd love to talk to them if, if you would like to. So where does the money go and how much money does the Wallingford Fire Department, Wallingford Volunteer Fire Department have? So uh, let me break it down for you. We have a little over $12,000 in the checkbook. Okay. So one reason that it's at $12,000 is each year we do, we used to do a banquet, right? With COVID and such, we couldn't do that. That ran about $1,800 to $2,000 to put the firefighters and their families, we used to go to the bowling alley, we would cater it, rent a few lanes, they would enjoy themselves and they would go there so people from the board could come or the, uh, the Prudential Committee could come. Um, and we could do that. So we, we haven't done that for two years. So where does the money go? What do we do with the money? So we do things for our members. We assist with funeral costs or celebration costs. So Warren Allen, we just did that one. So that was twelve to fifteen hundred dollars from the fire department for food and for um, uh, you handle most of that. So food, beverage, um, food, beverage, things, that, things that we things needed that we, to give them a hand for, with, right? For. So we do that to members and former members. So we assist them with that. Um, some of the other things that we do is there are two budgets. The operational budget comes from the Prudential Committee or from the 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 Water Department. It comes from them for the operational portion of it. So that's tires and fuel and fix the trucks and gear and all of those things. Everything else that the fire department needs is bought from the association. So when we have a structure fire 
and I've got eight, nine towns in here, or seven towns, whatever it turns out to be, and I've got 30 to 50 people here, we buy meals with that. So the rule of thumb is, anytime it's the middle of the night, you provide food. Anytime they miss a meal break, so if a 6 a.m. call comes in and they didn't get breakfast or whatever, we wait till 10 o'clock or so and we get them something there. If there's a lunchtime holdover, just like if you were at work, would you get a lunch break if you were staying at work? So if it's dinner or what have you, and that we do, we don't do anything fancy, right? We do Ramonto's pizza sometimes, we do um, Sal, we'll buy some things with if he happens to be open with, we'll get sandwiches and all that, but that all adds up as well. The uniforms that we have, the Class A uniforms, which is the um, tie, suit, double-breasted, pants, the whole shooting match there, and then the Class B uniform, which is the short sleeve shirt and pants. That's about six to seven hundred dollars per person. So we don't buy one set a year or one set here or there. We get a much better deal when we go in and buy six at a time. So when we buy six at a time and we're due to do that, that's three to four to five thousand. I don't know what it'll be this year with prices and things because we're not price them, but we're about to do that. So one of the things that we do also with the money is we fix and continue to maintain the old girl, which is the first motorized piece of apparatus Wallingford had, um, and it's there. So that needs work as well. But the issue is that we also use the money for it. So if I need six to eight thousand dollars to put into the old girl to get that done it doesn't leave me very much later if I bought the uniforms and I need money in there for meals but we also use this money to help members so if we have someone that's very sick that needs their wife to stay at a hotel nearby or whatever so the next one up for that will be one of our folks needs a double lung transplant right so his spouse is going to have to stay near him at uh, a hospital in Boston. I don't remember which one. I think it's Mass General, but I'm not positive. So she's going to have to stay there. We did some fundraising, but that brought in enough for maybe two or three nights. She's got to be down there for like 30 days. So we use the money for things like that. If there's a local fire department that we do, we go and use that money to go to their funerals for uh, out of respect because as you saw with Warren's funeral there's lots of fire departments that came home so we would do things like that so we need the uniforms or uh, it, it, whatever those costs would be and then just the ancillary things t-shirts these sweatshirts are eighty dollars each we don't buy them every year and not everybody gets a new one you have to be on the department a certain amount of time because we don't want to invest in and then the person leaves or what have you so they have names on them so we're thinking about not having names on them so they can be turned back in so the class a uniforms get turned back in but everybody's a different size right so you have to have tailor it anyway to get it so it looks decent on people or if we have someone that loses a lot of weight that type of thing so those are basically the things that we spend money on the coin drop is our sole source of money Right? So we collect that each year. We used to do a chicken barbecue, but if we got to making $100 or $200 at the end of the chicken barbecue after all the costs and such, um, there wasn't much there. Um, the town did like it. People do like to come over and have that, but the prices now, so we were the last time we did it two, maybe three years ago, was at $12.50, I think, a meal or twelve dollars a meal wow. and uh, we weren't making very much money there you can't ask the townspeople at a chicken dinner for fifteen dollars right maybe you can't but uh, we always have a tip jar there if you'd like to pay a little more that's fine excuse me but um, it, it just wasn't prosperous we would do it because the townspeople liked it and it would be fun and we would enjoy it so but there wouldn't be anything to help us with what we need to have in the coffers for those type of things so the other problem with the old girl is I don't want to, we don't want to piecemeal it because it costs more money for the labor if you're stripping down the transmission or stripping out the engine and you're stripping out things, I want to pay the labor once. So let's do the whole thing. But I've been very hesitant to spend that money yet because he hasn't had his lung transplant yet. So we don't want that. No, don't know what that cost is going to be. Um, and as well, the other costs that we must do. We've got to get the uniforms, we've got to get that straight. We buy the flags, we buy the things for Memorial Day to go out and do, do those type of things. So that's what we use the money for. And as you know, not a penny of that comes from a taxpayer. The town doesn't, doesn't give us money for that, right? They supply us with the budget. Right, which is through the Prudential Committee piece, but you guys are all in that because you guys contribute to that as well. And 
that's we use that for operational money that we do there. So they don't buy the meals for when we're out there. And the old days of having a few people get together that aren't on the department, maybe, or related to people on the department, to make food and do all that stuff, those are gone. We, we don't, we, I have a hard time getting enough firefighters on the ground, never mind asking people, hey, can you have your girlfriend or your dad or mom or Uncle Harry come in and, and do that? And we don't have the sources in town anymore. We used to have um, the store where the little uh, restaurant is. She used to be wonderful down there. We used to be able to get things there. Uh, we get Cumberland Farm sometimes for some pizzas, but they can't do much for us. So it, it's important to do that. We do call in the Red Cross if it's, if it's going to be quite some time. <coughs> Excuse me, or if it's really cold, really pizza is terrible on a 15 degree night, it just doesn't work, right? So Red Cross has a truck that they can bring in, they make coffee and they do some of those things, but you're really expected to give them some money as a donation but when you're there. So we would do, do that particular thing. And the county usually helps us with that as well. So that, that's where we are with that. We're looking at this coming Saturday with a rain date of Sunday, uh, 9 to 3. As oh, okay, the, the simple thing is normally we do two uh, coin drops a year. Yours is one of them. Is everybody on the on the uh, committee still in with doing the fire department coin drop? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Um, I don't have. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, sir. Do you want a copy of the permit? Out in the car, or if John emails it to you, but just I can always email it to you. Some if, if you want to see it, yeah. So that's where we stand, that's what we're doing, and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. All right, What's that? thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. Thank you, thank you. Here for the concession stand, okay, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, no. Um, so, um, so the you're going to have to up your audio just a bit. Uh, so the uh, the renovation we talked about the last time I was here. Um, so I created that plan because I do engineering and I have software and I can do stuff like that. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, that's not a real architectural plan. It doesn't meet ADA and fire code compliance. It's just something I did, like if I was going to renovate my home or something. Um, and it's not adequate to get bids on from contractors. Mm -hmm. they, they want a real plan. Um, uh, and. Bill Lawson suggested we talk to Jay White. Okay, and we and I did, and I talked to Jay's uh, company that he used to work for, um, and they provided me a quote for using Jay's services. And Jay would do. Now this is what I, uh, I think it would be nice, even if we didn't do anything to have this ADA and fire code evaluation done on the building. Even if we don't do anything. I don't think you want to do that, okay. Samuel. Okay, well, that's just a suggestion, but, um, but if we want to do anything, if we want to do any kind of renovating, we have to have a real stamp architectural plan. Uh, my CAD drawings aren't going to cut it. Um, uh, Jay's estimate for creating a plan uh, for a public bathroom utilizing the women's room area is 2500 And I talked to two, I talked to another architect in Dorset who will give us a quote, but he said it's going to be way higher. And I talked to his boss, uh, his former boss, and also he said, yeah, if you don't use Jay, he was a retired guy. It is going to be a lot higher. So, um, so if you if we want to do anything, you know, it'd be a good idea to you know to use Jay. So, my 
what I wanted to talk to you guys about was is that something we could fund using the building fund? And if not, if, you know, because if not, you know. Well, let me say right up front, I have no interest at all in using Jay White for anything again. We, we attempted to do, get the town hall painted and Jay White made such an issue out of the request for proposals that nobody would even bid on the project. I mean, he came back with this 30-page document that was so detailed and restrictive that I think he scared everybody off. And then when we asked him to to edit it, he was very unprofessional, to put it politely, about having to correct it. He ended up just quitting. So and there's been some other situations where we sought his help and he wouldn't help us. So. Uh, I am totally opposed against using Jay White for this. But the other thing I want to say is that this is a building that's used eight weeks out of the year. And I really think we need to think about that fact. I mean, my son Jeff met with you, and one of the things he didn't say to you, Sumia, was that if you, you start moving walls or anything, and it'll be the same case with a plumber, is that they'll have to pull a, what they call a state permit. And as soon as you do that, everything has to be brought up to code. Okay. So this is, could turn into this huge, expensive mm -hmm. project. Well, so that's, that's fine. I, that's one, and I wanted to bring it up. And, you know, okay. uh, I think we could back up and just focus on, on I, maintenance items. I agree like with you the, there. I, the I think the door, the, the drop ceiling, um, Bill Lawson thinks it needs new plumbing fixtures. Um, I agree with that. I think yeah, we should so. maintain what we have. Okay. okay. Well, that, that, that's good. That, but okay. but to, to turn around and spend a lot of money on a design to revamp the building, I mean, to re <laughs> it, it could turn into a huge expense. Some of the folks on the committee, on the rec committee, they they think that evaluating the existing building would be smart because they don't even know if the existing building, as is, meets these codes. Okay, so. The reason I'm saying it may be a good idea just to look at the building. No changes at all. Just look at the building the way it is now with the windows boarded up and and the doors that have been sealed up and stuff. Just because we might want to have a minimum, just to know what the minimum amount is necessary to bring it up to code. And that is kind of you know, if you think about it, maybe it's a safety thing, but it, so I'm, I'm, you know, that would be no renovating, no moving walls, no nothing. Just, just look at the building, and see if it, if it meets code. Well, we know there's things in it that don't mean code. Okay, well, then you know. So, I would be, I would be willing to bet that it won't come up to code, and you've got the state involved, and the state's going to say fix it or don't use it. If we don't use it, we're going to lose it. Okay. Well, you know, the, I'm just saying some of the other folks in the rec committee said that we should do that. So I, I had to bring it up. Yeah. How much was it going to cost to do that type of? 2500 $2, Jay would be doing the if we plan. if we got a real architect that's to check that's the not codes. retired, it would be more than that. Not not just the plan just to check for being up to code would be twenty five hundred. Uh, no, he that would be because I thought it was different. Us, that was to do the plan. Yeah. How you could probably well, get. I'm not thinking you could, it would be that much cheaper. You know, you know what we could do is put a ceiling on it, say. You know. the, the first thing we need to look at, it's not going to come up to code. 
that or you're going to pay a minimum of twenty five hundred dollars for somebody to tell us it's not up to code. No, they would tell us what to do and to then fix it. but but it would cost that much and then we would need yeah, and, to, and then we would need to act cheaper. on yeah. that yeah. yeah and then no matter what what happens we then have to act upon that or if we get close the now, building we might not have to act upon it immediately well I yes, you would have to. We might have depending to, on depending on the be legal. on be the it. things. Yeah, I'll come right back to the state. Use it or lose it. Right. Um, but I don't think it would be a tremendous amount of money if we're not changing anything. We might have to make some doors bigger. We might have to fix some windows. Um, because know. if we're already talking Is about making rather some, than, some rather than that, how about a house inspector? One of these guys that goes around and looks at the houses that are being sold and mm -hmm. stuff whose actual job is reading the wiring yeah. and yeah. that I don't think that'd be any more expensive than what he's talking about. Well I'm just thinking if we're already discussing maybe putting some money in to fix the stuff that we we know needs to kind of be like yeah. the fixtures, the door, the this. Yeah. It would be interesting I'm wondering because if we're going to do that in, and then since we are now having this discussion of should we have it checked or not, yeah. will somebody make us get it checked or not? It's kind of like the salt shed. Once we knew that, okay, we can't make any additions, we have to do this because we knew there was an issue. That, since we are, I mean, that maybe if you bring a plumber in, he's going to tell you what's what's what in there is the cold currently. Yeah. So, but as long as you don't mess mm -hmm. with stuff, stuff is grandfathered. Right. But as soon but as you start, start creating with the new plumbing and stuff, as yeah. as you're creating new mm -hmm. things. Then you have to pull a state permit, mm -hmm. and then they're going to say you got to bring everything up. Right. So yeah, if we are getting somebody in there to do, if we're, they will help guide. Then just they'll like the plumber will say, well, this isn't good. You need to do this. If we are fixing the door, and that's what we find that out. If they have some recommendation on their safety inspector or somebody along his degree coming in and looking at it. I did want to ask that, you know, the, the building has been changed. Like back when Gary Perdette used to live there, it was, yeah, it that was, was laid many, out many, many years ago. <laughs> okay, so when they made the change to where the way it is now, did they do an evaluation like that, or do you think they just did it? And because maybe I can't we can say go back and years and years ago, a lot of things got done that <laughs> just got done. I mean, well, I was thinking maybe we could dig and see if we can find something. Maybe there was a. Maybe I mean, it used to be a residence, from what, what I understand. understand. People, yeah. people used to live there yeah, years Gary ago. Yeah, said he lived there. So, um, that was when Gary Steve was. Steve Baker teenager. used to have beer in the refrigerator. <laughs> I heard it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Since. Since it is used for where children are kept during the summer camps, there must have been some evaluation at some point to sure. say that it's safe. They only, we only started to have, that just started being the spot for the wreck. Nothing was ever, two years ago, never had to be verified. Or Well, why don't we do this then? I can um, do what Nelson's saying. I'll see if there's any cheaper way of getting that valuation done, and then I can come back next month or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe maybe we don't use J, but we, I mean, we might. I mean, there's an advantage using J from an architect standpoint, like he's going to be the cheapest. But maybe there might be something else, like, like he's saying, an inspector of some sort. Mm -hmm. yeah. The home inspector yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Because that's what one last went was like three five hundred to get a appraiser and an inspector. I think three five hundred. That's what we had. Now there are it's probably a lot more now, but there are a lot. There are some issues with the building that we should just do as general maintenance. Mm -hmm. And the garage door is a safety issue. Okay. Because it's a heavy door and the frame. And the walls moving, and the frame, according to Bill Lewis, and the frame looks like it needs to be replaced. Because okay. um, mm -hmm. if that fell on somebody, that would be a disaster. Okay. 
Well, I don't think it's going to fall, but it is. It does need work. Yeah, okay. so that should probably be something that. Well, we'll we can try to get a quote just for just for fixing the quote. Yeah, that's okay. it to get uh, how much that costs. But Fandy, yeah, Fandy, what? With that fall that came down here, Wade, Wade or Wayne? Yeah. Do you think he'd come down and look at that building to tell us if we have any safety issues? Yeah, or if BLCT I, yeah. has somebody in that? I mean, he's, he's, a, he's our insurance, the guy that rates stuff for insurance. Oh. I he's, think he's done it. He's done it before too. Okay. But I also think if you ask your insurance company to come in and check something and they see something wrong, they're going to turn around and tell you you fix it. You got to get it fixed. He did come down, I don't remember, it was like four, five, six years ago because there was outlets that needed to be fixed and there, there was a number of things that he found that we did correct, even just like um, wood chips and under the swings out there, like all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So we did, and we have had weight down here and he has gone through the bottom and we did fix things that he pointed out. That was, and that was five, six years ago? I, I can't remember exactly, but it was several years ago. Okay. We need, we need to maintain things in the building, but I, I I think you should not go looking for trouble. But if you know, yeah, we need to see. <laughs> it's 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 finding that line between that and also keeping them safe. Yeah. And finding the reason. So if we had like that place in between be. person, like maybe. Yeah. Yep. Like what Nelson was saying. Yeah. Yep. So just that I hate to put money in to just have everything else. Right. As far as the well, VLCT yeah, will do it if there's no real money being involved in it. We yeah. would do the VLC contract. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. It's a good question. I'm, I mean, I'm just It would be something that... Is that something we want to ask somebody to look at or not? Like, have we ever asked about that in the past? I think if you... If you turn around and create that bathroom, that third bathroom, you're going to have to make it ADA accessible. Yeah, right. I, I agree that if yeah. you change stuff. Yeah, if you change to stuff, you're going to have to bring it yeah. up to code. I agree with that. Yeah. And you'd be yeah. afraid to see what the plumbing is underneath and how much more you would have to do. <laughs> right. Well, Bill Lovison said we should work with the existing plumbing, mm -hmm. and we were going to do that. Okay. So okay. We weren't going to add a new bathroom like we kind of talked about, because okay. that would be too expensive. And so we were going to work with the two existing bathrooms and create a layout that would utilize that. Um, that, that was what um, we were going to ask you to do. Yeah. Well, maybe we can go Nelson's route about finding that person through VCLT and going that way and then see about, you know, definitely if there are things that need to be maintained, yeah. looking into what that's going to be. And, and then a discussion yeah. if that's too much for at this time. Right. Which means potentially we don't have a concession stand next time. Right. As long as everybody's aware that that is what could occur. Right. right. And then seeing how much the um, repairs would be, because if that totally comes out of the rec budget or if building, mm -hmm. if the building fund or the grant accessed a little bit or the, or, the or grant, because you had one that the one this yeah, year was again there, next uh, summer, right? If there is a grant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That we could apply for. But just as long as we're all, you know, just because it says we cannot that we have to fix all these things, it may not. Right. be able to be done right immediately right while we're on the lake we also have a survey that was included um, basically even being a member of the board and knowing the finances I think I would check everything on this as a wish list. Um, there are some of these. Would you like to have a bathroom facility at the park? Well, yes, who wouldn't like to have their private bathroom at the park? 
Would you like to see a water fountain? Absolutely. We ruled these things out pretty much not because we wouldn't like to have them there and that we don't want people to have that convenience. It's simply been totally impractical for us to do it. This, this survey seems to me uh, like it's tr trying to resurrect a lot of stuff that we determined previously couldn't be done or we didn't her previous boards didn't want to do. Well, at least in in those two items, the one with the water fountain, because there's there's an issue with with getting water down there, and also the if I'm right, the fire department said that we can't access. That sounds right. The water that's down there. So right. that maybe that should be taken off the list because it's well, something that we can't do. I think in general we're uh, trying to make some improvements to the uh, town and a lot of the stuff I, I, I like you've got on you know, you've got on hiking and biking. No, I that's hear under the conservation committee. They're pretty much in charge with that whole area down there. They work in conjunction with you on some of this stuff, but I mean, pretty much they've been they've been pretty good at coming up with what they want to do over there. Uh, quite honestly, I don't see the need for a page and a half survey that everybody wants everything that's on it, and the board has no way to provide it. Just ask a historical question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, can of worms gonna happen now. Why is the conservation and the recreation recreation committee separate? It almost sounds like conservation would be a subgroup of the recreation committee. Because the most of the things that conservation does is would be deemed by most people considered recreation. So why is it its own separate group? It seems to me that there's a lot of issues because it's of ownership of like, like this. Right. So why why are they separate? For the first reason that comes to mind is they'd all quit. Well, we're going to we're, we're going back that. before oh. you. There is a lot of bitter enmity between. I, and, but I think that's because they are forced to like basically fight over the same resources. And it sounds like Sumi so just said that there's plans for conservation and well, we recreation to work a, together. We want to have a joint meeting. So that I've, we been, I've been on the board for 12 years. Yeah. I have never seen a confrontation between rec and conservation as to resources. Okay. Well, I mean, just even like right now, you're saying that they plan this, and and I know when I was on the rec committee, there was some. One of the things that we so That's here. why I'm just. That's why I'm just asking because it does seem like we're dividing resources, rather than working together. And the recreation committee would like to put out a survey just to see areas that might be worth exploring to see about. I mean, I looked at this and I saw about the free. Rental bike program, that sounds interesting. Have you checked that out though? No. Nope. Because somebody would this have to... This is the to, first time I heard about it. Somebody would have to to be around to rent out the bikes, make sure the bikes come back. Right. But the thing is, is that, does that mean that you don't check it out? Um, I, there's a company mm -hmm. that... Morgan has already talked to that sets it all up and they, they run it all kind of it's like uh, and, and this thing about them. online reservation for tennis that really gets my gander I <laughs> actually like that idea because it's it's an org it's something that I've actually been saying for a while it's like you don't know like flag football is a great example they dominate the whole Thing, and nobody really knows when they're going to be there. But it would be great to know if I could go on a, online and see like, oh, I want to bring a group of kids down there. I bring kids down there and you can't use a single section of the, of the field because flag football is all over there or even softball. In baseball, we have a lot of organizations. We've had frisbee, golf and stuff, one of the used things. But nobody really knows because there's no real 
communication to have and some organization. Sort of schedule yes. It's not a terrible idea. Yeah. Because then people know when they can plan on doing things when yeah. they can. They don't like go down and see nothing's available. That's, right. That was the whole point. It's like people might go play tennis and then there are always somebody there. And yeah. yeah. So so maybe not necessarily rental for like you know, for an ex specific, like, I'm going to take the tennis court all day. Right. But at least the more organized, the people that were give, granting permission to use the park, that they have some formal way, like the sports teams, and that, that it's visual to everybody and not just, I'm going to have a practice Sunday. As far as tennis, though, I mean, that court is empty right. half the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to get on my computer to sign up. If I decide I want to go down and play tennis some afternoon, I'm going to go down. If somebody's there, okay. Yeah, so like maybe not just necessarily that, there's but just of, in general. There's a lot of older people that mm -hmm. don't have computers. They're not going to. Yeah. There's a lot of older people that are actually, most of the people I see on that nowadays are older people that are playing uh, pickleball. Mm -hmm. So I said, from, from my point of view, not, not necessarily the tennis court, but the, the rec property in general. Having some sort of maybe a weekly schedule of the things that are already planned right. in place. Like when flag football has mm -hmm. their, their schedule is pretty well set. To have something sent to the town so people know mm -hmm. this is when flag football right. is doing their thing. I think that's a pretty good idea actually because that's something that's already planned in advance. If you had it out, then other people could plan activities around it. Right. It was available to see the schedule. Yeah. I mean, so with the survey, Maybe I think as much tennis, but other things. Right. So well, I, I think that's not a bad idea, but the rec committee could put out information mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on a, a computer. Although having I, I, more I, people use computers now than not, and having some sort of online access is not a bad idea. You know, it's uh, funny, I was, for a work time, there was a, everybody wanted, to, some hospitals wanted to move to having tablet kiosk sign-ins. The only people that complained were the 34-year-olds, the 30 to 40-year-olds saying the, the senior citizens would never be able to use them, and they did. <laughs> not. And I know 30-year-olds that aren't on internet, so it goes, you know, not everybody uses every resource. Okay, so, um, so are you guys going to vote or something about the survey? Like, should we do it or not? Or I think do, do, do you I'd like think to that actually see more, a few more questions for seniors. Yes. I don't oh, yeah. I feel like it's completely missing. I think, the uh, one thing that we get all the time is um, with, with, with the demographics in this town. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, I'm not really the one that was heading up that survey. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just, right. you know, but it's a different member of the record. But yeah, there really needs to be. I a, think maybe um, this survey with a few modifications, like including in the thing about the seniors, which mm -hmm. is a good idea. Like, and I think maybe taking off things that are. Um, a really not a possibility. We've we've really explored the water option down at the rec field, and I would love to see water down at the rec field. The way things stand right now, that's a it's a no go, and it's not coming from us. It's coming from other entities in town that says that we can't access that water supply. So maybe just taking a couple questions out and the stuff from stone in. meadow should come off because you guys all signed a document that stated that stone meadow is under the purview of the conservation committee so everything on there about stone meadow should come off of it unless this is a joint survey of recreation and conservation no. Wh no, which maybe not. that's an okay. idea it should be though never mind i mean since it is kind of all maybe you the two groups should work together to make a survey to see what people really want. Um, Rex shared this with conservation. They discussed it at their meeting, and uh, they, they said this is. They said Rec and conservation have completely different goals, so they don't want to go off right. by giving input on the survey. Okay. 
I'm not totally against the survey, but this one needs to be severely edited. Okay. I mean, like I said earlier, there's hardly nothing on here I wouldn't like to have. Uh, fishing access. Everybody fishes under the bridge. Or they fish down at the other bridge, down by True Temple. Most people aren't going to walk a long distance to get them. A true fly fisherman will go anywhere, but, uh, you know, a, a fishing access area, that's a state's germane. Uh, river access paths, for the most part, the river, the river isn't accessible for boating, you know. It's, I'll tell Shannon that we have to re look at the questions again and she can watch the video of this meeting. So and maybe we can bring it back next uh, in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Well thank you for your time and all the effort that's gone into this. And into the um, concession stand too. Yeah. yeah, we do appreciate the time you're putting yeah. into it, so we'll because it's not that the stuff isn't needed, just we need we need improvements. Making the survey just to start it out first if we want to do something like this in the language standard and have it be on the website so we can collect responses. I think um, Justin said something about when the survey is complete, putting in the Wallingford standard. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, no, sorry. I was saying instead of doing it at the election point, why mm -hmm. what about doing it, doing it through Wallingford standard, having a survey that links the website and have a form that people can fill out so to start to see, see what, what, what kind of responses this is versus having to print out all that paper and spend that money to allocate for something that people might either will or will not. So instead... Quite, quite honestly, I think you'll do better on front page forum That's than you will on a website. I've never been on our website, but I go on front page forum constantly. So maybe doing something where you had access in the front, por front porch forum and I don't know if we would want to make access in the newsletter as well. I know people do read the newsletter. I think the newsletter probably goes to more people in town than well, say, the if, front porch forum. If you're concerned that people can't use, won't all. Yeah, if it's somebody that's... <laughs> exactly. It can be difficult getting through it. <laughs> um, Is this something we want to decide now or do we want to table this we, for... I think we can decide once we see the... I think I'd like okay. to see the new survey first. Okay. Um, so as far as that, uh, the concession building, Yes. Um, so I'll see if I can find something cheaper than Jay. And I think but, yeah. if we're, if we're going to contact Wade, is it, yeah. to see about, yeah. we can do some things on our end too. Yeah. If that sounds okay. Yeah. So maybe come back in two weeks or something? Sounds, yes. Okay. We have the... Thank you so much. Yeah. We have the uh, updated list for the... Uh, Insurance VLTT. Julie, any anything comment on it? Just a uh, the comment that I made that um, Art wanted that furniture been added, and Casella gave us an extra six thousand for that. Mm -hmm. I think that I think the uh, estimate for the sandwich is a little interesting. Twenty three thousand. That's what we're. <laughs> What's this now? For passive renewal, our liability. 
change that. Hello. We got you back, Justin. Cool. <laughs> Justin, we're looking at the uh, VLCT uh, update. Sandy, I know that you listed the sand shed at 23702, can that be changed when we update it, I mean? Yeah. Okay. It can be, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to give them a number. And then do we want to add the contractor furniture open bin yeah. for the 6,000? That looks like art, art is recommended. What do we pay the animal control officer? Twelve hundred, isn't it? Yeah. Insurance is more than what we pay him. Stands worth almost a hundred thousand at the park. If nobody has anything to add or delete. I have enough to get to the sand shed. Yeah. yeah. Also, it had to be in by the way. Boy, I don't know anything. That's definitely under insurance. Yeah. It had to be in. Um, well, we know, we know if you had to just replace what stair is going to be one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand. Yes. If we had to replace that, just to put up the, the rafters and the structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we could build another shed for fifty fifty thousand dollars, probably. I bet you can't buy the trusses for that now. Mm -hmm. If you bought the exact same truss, I bet you can't cover them for that. Oh, wait a minute. I'm thinking of the salt shed. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. The sand shed, yes. Well, they got that in for like eleven or 12000 I think it was, right. the salt shed. Yeah. That's not worth $500. When, yeah, <laughs> but if, if we had to replace it, I mean, if it yeah. Phil, when we built that, um, you fell up on Church Street that passed away. Did all those poles and stuff, Dennis Smith. I wouldn't be surprised if the twenty-three thousand came from what we actually spent oh. yep. back at that time. Correct for that. You, you'd never replace it for that. Dick Bully built that. Mm -hmm. Dick, yeah. Dick Bully built that when he he got done working for me, went to work for the town for a few years, and went back to work for me. <laughs> and he died the same day he started back to work for. Me. Yep. You want, what number do you want to put on it? What number do we want to put on it? Uh, what do you think it would cost to do a pole barn there? If you had to rebuild it, it'd be at least probably seventy-five. Oh yeah, you'd be a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Okay. Easily. Okay. Yeah. And leave the sand to the ten six. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so just add the furniture bin and then change the sand shed. Okay. The sand shed is a guaranteed replacement value thing, though. I mean, we couldn't replace no. the sand or the salt shed. I mean, for ten thousand dollars. That one would be close because it's only what six, not even sixteen feet wide. It's fourteen by twenty by twelve. 
might be 14 at the high pitch to the back. We might be able to replace, it might be 20,000. So is the, what is the value of the sand shed now? Like what, what would the value be? Not how much to replace it, because that's what they're asking under that. Building. What's the value of it now? Right. Well, that's probably more than covers the value of it now. 11,000, 10, what, 10, 6, wasn't it? No, for the sand shed. Oh, sand shed? Uh, they're not asking replacement value, they're asking value of it as it stands. Right. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, but it's coded GRC, which says replacement cost without regard to the building value limit oh. shown. To me, that's saying we should insure it for what it would cost to replace it. That's what I got. Unless I don't understand that correctly. Yeah. Yeah, without regard to the building value limit. Yeah. Only applies to the first. So if you if you're reading that, right? Yeah. Where it says, so it sounds to me like it's insured for guaranteed replacement value regardless of what the building value is. Yes. So we should be putting in what we think the building the value is. To me, what the building value is, not what it would cost. Currently? Okay. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. I guess because I'm... later on, when you look at um, vehicles, <laughs> You know, they were they were talking about the one time and that same that same question came up, and she said, "What?" She told me what the the vehicle value was now. Okay. Maybe you could just ask for clarification on that. Yeah. Because I guess I read that a little differently too. To me, it looked like it was saying taking in the um, the replacement cost without regard to the building value. But maybe I'm just interpreting that. So yeah, asking for some clarification. It is. It is um, replacement cost. Without okay. That's what it, it'll, it's insured for. Oh, okay. It. okay. They're still asking what the building value was. Yeah. The okay. trust is Kasha over 100000 Just to replace those. Guys. That's figuring at 2500 a piece. I know. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Okay. Just so, do you need a motion? Do we need a motion on this? Do I hear a motion? Do we need to do that? Because we need to approve the VLCT renewal. So we need a motion? Sandy? With just those two changes, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the VLCT passive renewal mm -hmm. with changes as noted. I'll second that. You second it. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Where the country hurt them? Florence Avenue, one way. So I have a petition. Signed by the correct percentage? Yes, it's uh, over 100. I only needed 82. And this petition is asking uh, that the, your decision to take Florence Avenue to a one-way street uh, be taken uh, before the, uh, the voters uh, on November 8th. That they vote either yes or no for it. And it also says, uh, I'm not sure about this, but 
there would be an informational meeting on November 7th to discuss the proposed changes. I'm not. Do you have a select board meeting that night? November 7th? Yes. So I don't know if you have to have a, a quick meeting first, but. Yeah. So I was just going to do a, a, a half-page book ballot, just like Mill River's yes or no. It's going to go in a different box, and at and the end of the night, we'll just count them up. And it'll be available at the polls. Yes. Okay. Or if someone calls in for one, because the general election uh, ballots were mailed out Friday by the Secretary of State's office. So. <coughs> right. I mean, you can vote to send these out to everyone, okay. which would be right. about a thousand dollars. So, I make the motion that um, that we let Julie create a separate ballot for in-person voting on November eighth, and that also to make it available <coughs> upon request. I have a question on that, though. Oh, I think it, I need a second first. Second. Before we have discussion. Okay, we're good. Does it have been made to accept the petition? No, it's discussion, I think, right now. My understanding was the state statute says that when somebody turns in a petition, it has to be done at the next town meeting. Or, or we vote to hold a special election. So is, is, is this any? Is yeah. this considered a special election or whatever? It's certainly not the next town meeting. Or, or I talked with the Secretary of State's office. They said this could be presented to the voters that day since we're having an election. They can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we can now. Uh, Pardon? I think that was a discussion. I think yeah, discussion. that's all I wanted to yeah. know. Whether we were legal or not. Okay. You need a motion for a petition. I, uh, you made it, didn't you? Yes. And she seconded it, so we have a motion. So the motion is, and we had our discussion. Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Well, another question, does this mean that we don't do the signs at this point, or? Yeah, no, we can't, it may not be, because it's going to be. I can't feel it, so I'll say. We can't do signs yet, because now it's going to go to the voters on the 8th. We can't do what yet? We can't make signs for Florence Avenue yet. Oh, make signs for it? We can't do that yet. First, that make sense. it's going to go up to the voters. Right. Okay. I didn't know what the word signs was that he was saying. So does this mean that people that send in their ballots don't get to vote on that? They can request this ballot. Or come in on November 8th and vote. Right. Right. And how will they be notified that there's an additional ballot? Julie can put it in the newsletter. I'm sorry. I've got my hearing aids in, but I can't hear you. Julie can put it in the newsletter. The yeah. November newsletter will go out late October, as everybody know. Is that something you put on the front page form? It can be put on front page form, too. Yep. Yeah. And newsletter on the website. Yeah. Facebook. Um, just to go back to Bruce's question, if, um, what is this, if the town, if the annual town meeting falls within 60 days from the receipt of the petition, then you can wait till town meeting to hold the vote. If the annual town meeting does not fall within 60 days from the receipt of the petition, the select board must call a special meeting. So okay. that's okay. why vote on it in November. Errors and omissions. We have one, two, three of them here. Uh, the first is David and Roxanne and Aubrey. Difference is 9,200, and that would be a reduction. 
second is Joshua and Rebecca holding. Uh, difference is 3,500 there again it's a reduction and the third is Aaron and Carrie Aubrey 3,100 and there again it is a reduction all three are reductions Does anybody know what if, camera error means? I mean, I know Canva is their software program. Oh, oh okay. I do know the errors and emissions occurs every year. Yeah. And normally, <coughs> it's pretty much down path. Mm -hmm. And it seems like surveys were presented to defend this. Mm -hmm. so. Does somebody want to make a motion on all three, or do you wish to do all of them individually? He's got it all as one. Yeah. I'm making a motion to approve and sign all the errors and omissions. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I did. Select board concerns and comments. Other business, Tree Warden Rob Barker gave the town a price of 100 to remove a limb that fell in West Hill Cemetery. Uh, thankfully, it did not damage any headstones. Uh, Rob would be willing to remove the limb and tree for 500. Uh, there is 59.61 and 89 cents in the cemetery fund. What's your pleasure? Do you want it, the tree removed or just the limb? I would say the tree and the limb. Mm -hmm. Take the whole tree? Yes. Do I have a motion in the second? I make a motion that we remove the lemon tree that we let Rob, Rob Barker remove the lemon tree uh, at West Hill Cemetery for $500. Second. <laughs> You also had a and letter in there from Stephanie. Oh, oh, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> I'm going for your word. <laughs> uh, we had a letter from Regional Planning Commission, Stephanie Bork. Uh, Sandy goes into a, a long explanation here. Pretty much sum it up. We're at the next lowest rate and to get any lower of a rate of our percentage that we pay, we would have to do some serious work on our river scoping. Uh, town hall front and side door locks are going to be changed October 11th, and she'll be making keys for the appropriate people in our uh, package there of the people authorized to have keys. So I just got an update from the locksmith this afternoon. I sent it out to um, Kathy and Mel says if he now cannot do that, he has um, run into a problem with the high security lock, so he's not going to be able to do it. So I'll collect some estimates from someone. Okay. Okay. Also, she's asked the Mill River District uh, to use the gymnasium for the uh, town meeting if we have it rather than by a phone like we did before. Uh, and she has an announcement that Daddy Longlegs will be here Wednesday, October 26th. That's the concert upstairs here at Town Hall. Uh, 7 p.m. is the starting time. They usually last about an hour and a half or so. Uh, I guess I could say please come because they're worth going to. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Just like the first family. Uh, yeah. All righty. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Aye.